Well, how do the charms does I, Captain of the Steves, now myself, Professor Cynical, and Rice Starship Emporium, done a collaboration where we played No Man's Sky, like it's light, no fire. We called it Light No Sky. Yeah, it was a pretty decent little exercise, multiplayer enabled. However, those people that couldn't take part completely, and those people were Switch players. And they also thought, well, not everybody liked the idea of PvP, so what about if I made a video on how you could do something similar, but solo? Still enjoy all the sort of going on quests and traversing the world on flying mounts, but on your own. So that's what this video is going to be about, people. How you can get established, find yourself a planet, and then run quests on a day-to-day -day basis and have a bit of fun. So let's jump on over into game, shall we? And let's see if we can put something together, people. So this is the first time I've tried to put together a video like this, so kind of bear with me, because it's still an experiment, and you might have your own idea and your own take on how to do it better. And that's perfectly fine. This is... No by set in stone. There we go. Boom. So I'm over on the old title screen. I'm going to be hitting up a new save and I'm going to be hitting up creative save. The reason why I'm hitting up a creative save, it gives you all the base parts. It gives you all the portal glyphs right from the word go. It shows you a heck of a lot of grind and messing about with the tutorial. So I'm going to hit up creative mode. I'll see you okay, in the game. Okay, Well, I'm inside of game and it's just put me on some random planet by a base computer like it normally does. Lovely jubbly. And I've got my own little radiant pillar ship. Now, the first things to do with the ship. Okay, so here we go. Let's go into the ship. The first thing I really want to do with this is I want to put in some scanners. I want to be putting in this one, which is the conflict scanner. And I want to be putting in the economy scanner. There we go. Two scanners, install them and coated inside the ship. And for the actual warp drive itself, so I'll go to warp. I want to put in the idiom drive. Chikapow. And you know what? I'm just going to put in the other warp drives just to give it a little bit more of a boost. Just so hopefully it can get a little bit further in its warp jumps for when we're looking for a suitable planet. So we go. Let's, uh, let's just stick in all of these drives for now. And what I might do is just move that one off of there, put that there, put that on there, just to give it a little bit more of a boost on warp drive. Oh, the warp drive range hasn't overly changed, to be honest, though, people, has it? Is there anything else I can put in there? Yeah, we can put in that one. There we go. That's the warp, the emergency warp thingy. But that's that's all I've got there, really. I'm going to stick those in. It's not giving me much more of a warp range. But anyways, OK, and then inside of my actual exosuit, the sort of things that I want to install here is I just want the hazmat gauntlets. So let's put that in. There you go. That'll let me pick hazardous plants and all that sort of shenanigans. The multi-tool, I'm going to leave that for now because I might claim a multi-tool up at the old Nexus and I'll be tooling that up. So that's something that I need to do next is get the Nexus to appear because I want all the base sort of parts for customization reasons. If I'm going to make a base that looks like something out of light, no fire, then I kind of need those customizations. So to get that started, I need to do a warp jump and I need to instigate the first step of the Artemis quest line. So here we go, it doesn't really matter where you jump to, you can follow the actual line if you really want to, might as well. And as soon as you come out of warp in the letterbox view, you should get a communique and it should be from Artemis telling you to go to their crashed ship. Okay, well I've arrived, Kated. It is nice seeing these new space stations, I'm not gonna lie. It still hasn't worn Finn just yet. Not really. But anyway, just just sort of pulse a little bit, and you should get some sort of communique come in any second. Ow! That's an insurance claim. There we go! Chicka boom! 16, 16, 16! There we go. In comes this um, transmission. Identify yourself, it should point you to a planet. And it should take you to a crashed ship with a washing machine full of death. It's like this um, washing machine with a big red bulbous bubble in it. You'll see it in a minute, people. You'll see why I call it the washing machine of death. It's a bit freaking weird. Anyway, let's, um, let's go over this way. Imagine a whole laundrette full of those things. Anyway, we're on our way. Okay, let's, well, let's head on down to the old planet then. Let's go to this location. Now, you've probably spotted what I've spotted, which says approximate location. It's not the location. Now, sometimes when you're lucky, as you're flying down to the planet, you will see something spawn in in way of a structure that usually can be quite telling as to where you should be going. 
but I'm not seeing too much. Oh, I'm seeing quite a lot of structures actually tell a lie. All right, well, I'm just going to land on this one because it's got a landing pad. Not that it only matters. I'm in creative mode, but I'm going to have to now get myself to that uh, location. And you do that by using the sweep scanner, which should already be installed. So here we go. Let's land. Jump on out and get rid of that letterbox view. And there's a sweep scanner there. I've got to go 400 U's that way. It's not too far, but it is in an early save because you can't do the mill. Okay, stage. well, I've arrived, Decated, at the washing machine of death. There you go, look. You see the red sort of mass come out of it in a moment. I think this is the one that does that. It might not be, actually. It might not be the one full of death. This one might just be the one full of broken toffee. I got, yeah, yeah, so the one full of broken toffee. All right, okay, fine. Okay, well, you interact with this anyway. Extract records. Lovely jobs. Sweet. Done, diddly, and done. That's all you need to do here, people. Uh, that's pretty much it. Okay, well, let's um, let's go get my ship then, because it's in creative mode, and just can call in my ship. Zoom. Arrive to me, my pretty, I guess. And then you take to the sky, and you should get another communique. And that communique should this time be from NADA. And they should call in the spatial anomaly. Let's see if that takes place, shall we? Thundering into the stars, I fly! I guess, with my radiant pillar. There we go. Should get the little Daft Punk looking guy there. Yes, there he is. Head up through the menus. So the troop. Here comes the old freaking Nexus. I call it the Nexus because there's a lot of things in this game called Anomaly, including you as the player model. You're actually marked and designated as Anomaly. There's also spatial anomalies that you can come across. There's all sorts of other anomalies. So I call this thing the Nexus. I know it's the Mission Cube. I get people get telling me off. It's not the spatial anomaly, Captain Steve. Oh, uh, no, it's not the Nexus. It's the spatial anomaly. Yeah, I know. But there's so many things in this game called Anomaly that um, I call it the Nexus. So there you are. You call it what you want to call it. I call it something wrong, I know, but I don't care. Anyway, let's head on over here. And now we need to get all of our cosmetics from good old Johnny Five. Now, luckily, we've got all the base parts because we started in, in creative mode. The only thing we don't got is everything this guy's got. So here we go. Let's go speed to him. I'm going to claim my expedition rewards first. Now, there's a couple in here that are going to help me a little bit, like I've got the flying airworms. So that's lovely. I'm going to get that. But I'm also going to get this app, this spectre. Um, or the staff, mainly because it looks like something straight out of Light No Fire. The only thing that I'm going to do to it, though, is I'm going to dismantle the OP tech, which is all of this sort of stuff. I'm going to get rid of all of that. I mean, you can you play this however you want. You know, I'm not dictating to you how you should do this, this thing. You know, this is just a made-up game mode, and I want the bolt caster just as a weapon that's just going to help me out a little bit, but that is not overly, you know, impressive, is it? So I go for the bolt caster, chicka boom, chicka pow. And you know what? I'm just going to give it the little mini addition thing. There we go. That's it. So I've got my bolt caster in, and I've got my advanced mining laser. That's it. That's pretty much it. And oh, I've got the terrain manipulator and the, yeah, the analysis visor. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Lovely jubbly. That's pretty much all I'm having inside of this multi tool. Heck yes. Lovely jobs. Okay, all right, now we've got that done, which is pretty darn freaking epic and lovely. I need to go and claim everything from the Quicksilver Merchants store. So let's go through the rest of these. And I'm just going to claim all the cosmetic things. I mean, yeah, sod it, I'll take that, take that. But yeah, I want all the bits for bases. I don't really need that guy. You can't ride it even though it flies. It just flies around you. I'm going to claim all the cosmetics for base building. And I'll be right back with you people. In a moment, after I've gone through all of these. Oh no, whoops, I nearly claimed the Utopia Speeder. That threw me out the menu. You can see it's okay, that's tedious. all the expedition stuff. Now I need to go in here and claim all the Quicksilver stuff. Yeah, these are all available to me because I've already purchased them in um, previous saves. So yeah, the same story again, but this time you've actually got to go through the menu. It's even more tedium. Okay. And then you've got to put up with the voice of Exo going, collectible received, while you've got Johnny Five in the background then mumbling some language that you have no idea what he's saying. It's fun on the eardrums. I would I would suggest turning your sound down. Okay, well, in my case, taking off my headset. Okay, now something that I've gone and done is I've gone and collected a load of eggs by mistake and these fireworks. I'm going to get rid of the fireworks, don't really need them. Right, now the only really... The only creature that I want is a flying one. That's not a flying creature. That one is, the hungry worm. And these ones I don't believe are. So I'm going to get rid of those. And that's the only one I want. So there we are. I'm going to hatch that anyway. 
Got my first creature, I think. I think that hatched the creature anyway. Did it hatch him? Yeah, I think it did. So he should be somewhere flying around me but now, right now. And then I'm going to head on over to the appearance modifier. Now, this is where something important takes place. Hold on. I'll I reconvene after these stop popping up. Because that's okay, jumps. I think it's finished. I, I thought it finished a minute ago. Then it popped up with another one, like freaking popcorn in a microwave. Anyway, so let's go into the old appearance modifier. Now, this is where I said about something important. Because if you do want to use this save in the future, when it comes to joining myself, Ricey or Cynical, what we're hoping to do to sort of make it so it's easier to tell what faction you're in is I myself will be playing as Vikeen. Yeah, Vikeen, Steve. Yeah, it kind of works, doesn't it? And Cynical will be going as Gek, uh, with his, his skullduggery and his glitchy type ways. I think he lines quite nicely to the Gek. And then you've got Corvax for Ricey. You know, he is sort of like more analytical than the two of us. So yeah, I kind of got Vikeen as the default. Anyway, so I'm going to go as Vikeen. Lovely jubbly. Well, that's nearly my logo colours already. I haven't got much to do with them. But the really important thing is ch ch choosing a banner and choosing a title. It's the title that's important. So because I'm going as Vikeen, what I want is a title that says Vikeen in the title. Okay? So I'm looking for one that says Vikeen in the actual title. There's one right there. Now you can see here, it only unlocks when I get to rank 3 of Vikeen. So I'm going to choose that anyway. Lovely jubbly. Vikeen at arms. So when you scan me, when you see my, my marker on a planet, you can see I'm Vikeen from miles away. So you know to start making your decision to come and get me. Now there are other ones in here for Gek and stuff like that. Like you've got Toil Gek and you've got Hairling. Well, you've got Toil Gek, you've got Work Gek. And they're like ranks 1 and 2, which are nice and easy. Now when it comes to the Corvax, it's a little bit difficult to tell them apart, but if you go for the ones that say Entity somewhere inside of there, then we know that you're a Corvax Entity. There's not a title that I can find inside of my roster of titles that I've managed to get across all my saves that has Corvax in the title. I mean, I haven't gone through every single Pidget, because that would just be freaking sad, because there's billions of titles in there. But a lot of them you don't unlock till later in the game. I'm looking for the ones that are easy to unlock. So, the ones that have Entity in, like technician entity you get at rank two so you're probably thinking well how am i going to get those unlocked quickly i will show you because with the next step of finding the monolith you can get your ranks unlocked at a trading post extremely quickly so i'm going to pretend that i haven't got all the way up to rank seven with my core with my uh, viking which is the hardest one to get to really consider oh it's, it's actually at rank three but i'm going to take it all the way up to rank seven just to show you how quickly it is you know how quick it is to get your ranks up Anyways, I'm now going to make my Corvax look... Oh, not my Corvax. My Viking look how I want my Viking to look. And I'm also going to do my um, banner as well. Um, yeah, yeah I, I sort this out. Anyway, I'm going to sort that out. I'll read Okay, Jums, well, there you go. There's my Viking in red, white and black. Lovely and jubbly, all my logo -y type colours. And I've chose the title Viking at Arms, which is a rank-free title. Okay, so let's head on out of here. Now... If you're wondering, if you go into your old um, discoveries, or well, actually catalogue, and go into here and go under Viking, you can see here at the moment I'm, I'm not even ranked at all. So we need to get that ranking up to at least level 3 before I would have unlocked that title, technically. So I'm going to show you how to get that rank all the way up, like I mentioned. And it's, it's by using the actual um, trading posts. Now, something else to mention, people, is inside of the Twitch rewards, if you took part in Twitch rewards, you might also have a, thing, a few things inside the Twitch rewards that you might want to look at. So if, you, if you're not allowed to use the staff because you're not a leader, you can always use something in here. You might have a flying pet in here. I don't know. I mean, there you go. Look, I've got a beetle already that I can claim. So I'm going to claim that beetle. But don't you worry. I'll show you how you can get some flying pets of your own. I'm also going to take that one because it's another flyer. So I can get those. And I was looking to see if I've got a multi-tool in here, which I don't believe I do. Okay, cool. So I've got three flying pets already. I've got a beetle, I've got a butterfly, which is enough for me. But I'll show you how you can get yourself some other flying pets if you're not as lucky as I and have that to hand. Okay, right now, pretty much at this stage, you've got everything almost that you need to come and join myself, Cynical or Ricey. Okay, so let's um, fly on out. I'm just going to jump in my ship out of my ship to create a save because I've done quite a lot in here and I don't fancy doing it all again if my game crashes. 
and let's fly out. Sadly, that's still a thing you've got to worry about, especially while you've got multiplayer on and you're faffing about with claiming. Okay, things. right now, people, you want to be able to find yourself a monolith and a trading post. Now, to find a monolith, I need to go to the station and get some cartography maps. So I'm just going to fly on over to the station and grab a couple of cartography maps. I'll see you in the station. I do love this triumphant music the first time you fly into a station. And look at this station with the orange and purple hues. The stations have so much more gravitas to them now. And especially when you fly into one for the first time and all the lights come in, the music hits up. It, it's, it is quite wondrous. I, new players, new players, you've been spoilt by all this, you know? This is freaking beautiful. Anyway, let's go on over to the old cartography maps guy. Now, all I'm going to do is buy five of the alien charts. Okay, so we go, exchange for specific charts. And I just want five of these alien charts. There we go, check them out. Now... There's only five types of alien structure. So if I pop all five of these, alien artifact detected, not what we want. We want a monolith. There we go. On the second one, I got a monolith. Lovely jubbly. You might have to go for all five of yours. It doesn't really matter. But anyway, before we go to the monolith, we need to go to a trading post. And at the trading post, we need to get something that we can surrender to the monolith to give us a location to a portal. Okay, so let's go and find ourselves a trading post. So off this menu, we're using our economy scanner we installed right at the start. Locate trading post, trading post detected. Let's just hope it's near the monolith, just for shortness of video's sake. I'll see you at the trading post. Okay, now if you've checked the appearance modifier, you've already got a Viking title or a Gek title or a, an entity title, one that either says Gek in the title, Viking or entity in the title for Corvax, then technically you don't have to do too much at this step. You only have to do the first part, not the second, that I'm going to show you. But what you're doing is you're waiting for traders to land, like this one over here. And we're still in creative mode, so we can buy whatever we like from these traders. Now, what you're after is the first two purple trinkets that they have on offer. So here we go. Let's go into here. Offer to trade. And you just want to buy the full stack of each of those. Okay? Cool, yeah. Brilliant. Bought those. We need to offer up one of those to the monolith. If you have already got your title sorted, you don't need to do this step. Okay, You can just go and fly over to the monolith, which I'll be back at doing in a second. But to raise, raise your actual rank now with your entity in question. I mean, at the moment, I'm at a Corvax system. So if I wanted to raise my Viking, I'd have to jump to a Viking system. But I'm just going to do it here at the Corvax system to show you how quick it is to get yourself up in, in ranking. So here we go. Offer uh, Corvax. There you are. Done. And you just keep doing that. Just keep gifting them. And you should see above my head here, my rank should go up in a bit. There you go. Standing with Corvax times one. And you just need to do that until you've got like to rank seven or whatever. Or rank three even. Depending on where your rank is. Okay, there you go. It's gone up by two. So if I was to go into my old discoveries now. and go into here. I am now... Total of six standing, and it's going to go up again in another two. So I just need to keep handing stuff into these guys until I get to the relevant rank to unlock those titles that I want. So you might be here a little while doing this, just interact. You can interact with the same guy over and over and over and over again. And because you're in creative mode, because you've got these things, they're not going to go down in number either. I only got four and five off of the two. It's not going to take away from me. It's fine. Just keep handing it in over and over again and increase your ranking until it gets to max if you really want to with that race. So like I said, if you are wanting to be Gek from the Galactic map, you'd have to jump to a Gek system and then find your trading post. If you want, there you go. Look, we've gone up there. Lovely. Sweet. And yeah, or, or a callback system, depending on which rank race you want to be. Oh, fudge sake. I just want to get in my ship. Okay, cool. Let's get in my ship. And let's fly on over to the monolith. Sweet. Where's the monolith? Ancient plaque. We don't want that. There's the monolith. One hour away. If I fly up through the atmosphere. And then go back down again. Should be able to get there a lot quicker. Boom. That's okay, so I'm at the monolith. Now, there is an important step here, too. Um, for the actual puzzle, well, you have to pass the puzzle. You have to get it right. Or else it disables the monolith. So you might want to jump out of your ship, make sure it's definitely created an auto save, jump in it, jump back out a couple of times just to get a proper save done. But here we go. 
I've done these so many times, I'm usually pretty good at it, to be fair. Oh, it's the Metal Spiders one. I'm just going to wait. I think that's just a wait. You just wait on this one. That's fine. Boom. Pollution Nation fades. Boom. There we go. I get rewarded. And now you can interact with it a second time. If you can't interact with it a second time and you've got those two purple trinkets, something's gone wrong, you've probably failed the quest, reload your save, try again, choose a different option. There we go. Locate a portal. Thank you. Brilliant. Okay. Now I just need to go find a portal. There it is over there. Chicka boom. Okay, jump. So now I've actually located a portal. At this point, technically, I could just create a save. Wait until, you know, myself and uh, Professor Cynical and also Rice's Starship Emporium starts up another Light No Sky community event and then jump over to the planetary code once I've got it and go and join these guys. Right now is where I'm perfectly aligned to do that as a Viking to join Captain Steve's brew crew. You know, if you want to be over on Rice's, you would have been as a Corvax, you would have got yourself a Corvax title by going through the galactic map, going to a Corvax system, getting the Corvax system unlocked at the trading post and getting your title allocated there. And you may have to go back up to an appearance modifier to put your title on. But anyways, now that we're here though, I'll be going on and showing you how to do a solo sort of play, okay people? So I've just jumped out of my ship which has created a save. I want to activate the portal. There we go, I'm still in creative mode so I can go through all of this. Activate all of that. Lovely jubbly. And then I just need portal codes. Now if you haven't already got beetles and you haven't already got a butterfly or any flying fauna, you might want to go to a planet and grab a beetle and grab a butterfly. So I'm going to give portal codes to get both a butterfly and also a beetle right now, people. And the way I'm going to do that is by jumping over onto Reddit and getting okay, a Okay, so I'm on Reddit and I'm on the coordinate exchange. Now, if you like Facebook, there is also another group called the Interstellar Index, which is equally as awesome. But anyway, inside of this search bar at the top, of reddit all i want to do is click in there and i just want to then go for a beetle first beetle boom and you can find loads of beetles it's like there's one right here you just need to make sure that it's definitely in euclid so if you click on this i mean this was just two months ago and there's a beetle code right there let's see if we can make this picture a bit bigger it's in the euclid galaxy and there's your portal code so you can put in the portal code to go and get yourself this lovely winged beastie Heck yes, and it looks quite large in size, so it might be able to go over oceans, it might not. I really don't know. Okay, so that's the Euclid galaxy, and there's your beetle. Now, if I wanted a butterfly, it's just a case of doing the same thing. Butterfly, chicka pow. And let's see if we can find, look, just 26 days ago, let's hope that, that one is inside of Euclid. Normally, you have to you click it, and it will tell you whether it's Euclid or whatever. Yeah, look, there you go, fauna inside of Euclid. And the portal code on this one, it's not on that screenshot by the looks of things. There it is right there. Let me make that a bit bigger for you on screen. And that's where you can get yourself a butterfly. So it's a case of putting in those two codes, people inside the view of us. Now, is finding your own light no sky planet. Now you can go and find these inside of game manually. Or perhaps you want to do it inside of um, good old Reddit as well. So instead of searching for creatures, you can actually search for paradise. If I can spell the word paradise. Paradise. Is it a C or is it an S? I can never remember. I think it's an S. There you go. Boom. And there you go. You can find yourself a load of Earth-like planets. The only thing is, with going over to finds on the internet, is there's usually a lot of bases on there. So it depends on what sort of sort um, experience you want. If you want to complete solo jaunt with no other player bases in, you might not want to use this method. You might want to find your own planet at this stage. But, you know, I've given you how to get yourself to a portal. Shall I show you how I go about finding really awesome lush planets? Now, I've already got my flying creatures, so I'm good. But for you guys, you might want to visit those planets, tame those creatures, get their eggs, and th there you go. Okay, anyway, let's jump back over into game quickly. Uh, so let's go back into game. Pow! Back into game. So if I just come out of here for a quick, quick brief moment, you're probably wondering how you go about taming a creature. So to tame a creature, you need to have creature pellets. Now you should already have them. So there you go, there's some there. And I'm just going to make 10 of them, for example. 
Then you need to find a creature. So if you scan, you're going to see red dots. Okay. Let's just pretend that this is one of the flying beetles or, or, or whatever. And you just need to put your cursor on them and offer a pellet. Now, it could be quite hard if they're flying. But after you interact with them a second time, and you just go to adopt as companion. Oh, my God. I've just got the freakiest little creature you one could imagine. I quite like him, though. <laughs> he looks quite fitting for a Viking pet, doesn't he? You're coming with me on adventures. How do you like them apples? Oh, he's so cute. Holy fudge. Look at him go. Oh, I'm going to call him Stubbs. Oh, little Stubbs. Okay, right, we've got little Stubbs. Now, anyway, that's how you can actually, uh, you know, tame a creature or whatever. So, now you could hit up a paradise planet using the portal. Not a problem. Um, you know, you, you can, you whatever. But I'm just going to put a base computer here anyway. Because it's by a portal. So if I do want to come back and join Rice's Starship Emporium or Captain Steve or Professor Cynical when they start their event, I can just come straight back to this portal, jump into it, hit up their code, jump on in and join them. OK, right. Now, people, this is the prep work all done for Light No Sky. I've got my um, flying creatures. Well, I haven't yet. I haven't hatched them. Let's hatch them quickly. Chicka pow. Got this little guy. Gently pet. Give it a treat. Lovely jubbly. We've got that one. Sweet. And I'm going to hatch the other one as well. Now, the beauty of me hatching these now is hopefully by the time there is a community event, these will be ready to lay eggs. And then I can give other ones of these to some of my friends or whoever I meet up with, you know. There we go. Let's ride him. Let's just see how fast he is. It's not the fastest when it comes to flying creatures. Miyogi's birds are a lot faster. But that is faster than the butterfly. And it's faster than my Wormy Mum Worm Worm, and he's pretty cool colours. Pretty nice. Okay, so I'm going to jump in my ship. Out of my ship. And the next episode in this series, people, is how to find your perfect light no fire, light no sky planet manually, rather than using a portal code. Because anyone can find one using a portal code, using the method I just showed you by using either Reddit or Facebook, the Coordinate Exchange or the Interstellar Index. Your choice. But the next episode is going to be finding the planet, putting down our base, our proper base in light no sky type way. And uh, yeah, that's going to be the next episode. So if you like this, tune in for the next one. Salute to Mondo. See you soon. Cheery bye. Thank you to all my super members and backers to my channel. Thinking one that goes by the name of Lighthouse's system. Lighthouse's system. Like no fire, like no sky. Lighthouse's system. Thank you from Captain Steve. I rarely see you comment or appear in my live chat. So glad you picked a back my channel. Lighthouse is system like no fire, like no sky. Lighthouse is system. Thank you from Captain Steve. Thank you, Chum. It's a great thing to do It would be hard to run my channel without you Without all my backers on YouTube and Patreon And revenue alone would be next to none